Hello, this is Yasudara. It's the first time I go live on my computer. Um, welcome for the first episode of New Generation Conversation um, about voices. And I'm just looking if I can, oh yes, I think I can do that. I can share it on my, no. Awesome, okay, great. So um, voices, voices, voices. Um, I've been a vocal coach for many, many, many years and a performer. And um, yesterday I was having a conversation with a friend um, about possibilities with voices, about things that your voice can actually create when you start asking it questions. And um, last week I was also coaching somebody that um, had a lot of experience with singing and then stopped because a lot of judgments occurred in um, their world and that didn't work for them and their body anymore. So that person had not been singing like for about 10 years and asked to do a session and the joy that appeared in um, her world and the possibilities with the voice that actually, um, that got space to, to, to come up was amazing. And um, so I've been working with a lot of regular tools and then got involved in um, a method or started working with a method access consciousness, which is like a bunch of pragmatic tools, questions um, and processes where you can actually start changing the reality you have in this very moment. And um, what I've seen changing for people, how they spoke, how they sung, how they actually started releasing and unlocking tensions that had been in their voice or throat area for many, many, many years. Um, it's just amazing. So I thought, let's have a little conversation here online. And it's the first time I do this, um, like really like an episode. So I wonder how that goes. Because um, it's really looking at how many judgments do you pick on or how many judgments do you even have on your voice, like how it sounds, about what you say, about like when you're saying stuff, like what you are supposed to say, what you're not supposed to say, and how much um, are you aware of other people listening to you or other people watching you and you perceive judgment of them, but is it actually projects on you or is it judgment they have on them that they're actually projecting on you? And um, that's the thing that I've, like asked a lot of singers that I worked with, if I take it to singers, because that's mainly what I've been doing in the last few years. It's like, when you're in front of an audience, how much are you aware of the judgment in the room? How much are you aware of, like for example, if you are um, singing or performing or having a lecture where there are many people that have to do the same thing before or after you, how much are you aware of these people being nervous how much are you aware of them having judgment about them like oh my god am i going to be good enough was it good enough um oh i don't think i said the right things i missed out on some things people were not like present um, so many things that actually go on that keep you from being present and perform whatever it is you need to do in performance so it doesn't have to be singing um and actually show up like you entirely like you and that goes when you start asking yourself these questions and train in a very different way not from judgment and not particularly from technique but um from looking at like what is it you have decided about you that you can do that you cannot do um and yesterday during the conversation it was very interesting like how many like how much does your culture um actually like provides this set of, um, you can call it like um, limitations. Like, okay, so I am from Finland or I am from England or I am American. And how much does that often define your voice? And what if that didn't have, didn't have to? Like it could be, but it's like looking there, um, when, I, when I work with people, it's really looking often at like what they have decided about them, what they have decided about them and their voice. Um, about what they're capable of that has often not so much to do with what they're truly capable of and that's where the magic actually
actually starts when you have no more decisions, when you have no more projections about you, when you have no more judgments about you. And you're just wondering, like, I wonder how this is going to go. Like, hey, I'm going to have a conference. Of, or like, hey, <laughs> like, off. Um, or like, I'm like having this Facebook Live. What is going to show up? What energies are going to be when you are in a room full of people? What energies are actually being there that you can be aware of before? But if you're willing to not um, over-prepare, not judge yourself, you can actually start playing with everything you perceive. And this is um, magical. So, um, yeah, I just thought let's make a little video about this. And um, let's talk, let's, let's open up a, con a different conversation um, about voices. Because I've, like, I've, started with singing many 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 years ago i think like about 25 years ago and i had the luck to have a lot of awesome teachers and i also had like the luck to had have a lot of people around me that functioned from a lot of judgments which um caused like losing my voice at the first year of theater school and i had actually no idea i really thought there was a dysfunction in my throat and that was how it showed up. Um, so I went through all these procedures. I went to voice teachers. I went to Logopedia. Do you say that in English? I'm not um, <laughs> native English or American. So maybe some words show up that are not, that are not English. Um, I went through weeks of silence, um, a lot of pain with that. And then for many years, for about 10 years, a lot of uncertainty as a singer, like never being sure about if my voice was going to work or not. Um, if I had like a long tour and I would sign a contract, I would sign the contract and somewhere underneath there was always this energy of like, I hope I'm going to make it. I hope things are going to work out. I hope um, I don't have to get a cold. I hope there was so much hoping around that. And um, usually in the end it worked out, but it contracted something in my universe that always costs some kind of a price in the end. Um, and there have been many years that I stopped singing because I was judging myself so much, I was receiving so much judgment, and it was actually not at all fun anymore. So when I got in touch with these tools and started asking questions, it took me quite a while to start unraveling actually what was going on because I had literally decided about my voice that it wasn't strong enough and that I was not a good performer because like I've done all the studies, I've done all the technique. If I would be a good performer, that would not occur. Um, and so through this process of like starting to coach people in a different way and starting to play with not what some people do, but what you can be that will actually allow your body and your voice to function in a very different way. I started looking back at my history with my voice and realizing like, oh my God, like what has actually been true there? What was my body and what was my voice telling me when it stopped working? So um, if you're watching this and you have been struggling with your voice or with your body, um, one of the questions I work with a lot is like, hey, what is my body trying to tell me? Like if my body literally stops or knocks me down or like my voice like just shuts off, like what is going on? What is my body trying to tell me? Is it trying to tell me like I don't want to do this or is it just giving me information about things around, about how many judgment, how many, what else is going on there? And it's really interesting because um, since I've been playing with that, there is so much more ease with my voice, with my body, because I get like, oh my God, there is nothing wrong. Um, and I see your Bianca is writing something. How many judgments can you have about? Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's not even like what judgment, but how many judgments do you have about your body, about your voice? That actually like really shut off um, the space where you can truly show up. And um, the the most exciting part, I'm, I'm like the kind of person that like things to be easy, that like things to be fun, and then like things to change fast. And um, what I started seeing, when you start changing what you can be by asking questions, by playing with 
um, some exercises, things started changing immediately. It was not even practicing. I didn't have to do any technique. My body knew exactly how to work. My body knew exactly what to do. And my voice knew exactly what he was supposed to do for whatever song I would pick. And the same would happen with the students I was working with. And they would literally stop often like in the middle of a song, like looking around like who, who the hell was doing this? And I was looking at them like, well, I wasn't singing and we're alone in this room. So, and then they would tell me like, but you and I both know that I, I am not capable of this. I've never been capable of doing this. And whatever came out of my, like came out, like I cannot do that. And that's like a space where I think it's really, really, really exciting. Hi, oh, from Slovenia, hello. <laughs> Hi, so nice you're watching. So for me, that was really exciting because you actually start opening up a space where nobody knows what's gonna come up, what's gonna show up, what's gonna come out of your mouth, what you're gonna do with your body. And like 99% of the time, it was exceeding any expectation, any projection and any judgment that I or the person had. And um, that was where I started looking at like, wow, there is gold in this. Because like so many techniques are amazing. And there is, for me, there was always this part like, yeah, becoming a better singer. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. But there is something else. I know. I know I can do better. I know it was like, until I started working with this energy of being, it was unachievable because it was actually not something I got later. It was not something about doing, but it was about changing what I was willing to be. And um, this was so awesome because like at one point I came back from a training and it was the beginning of the school year. So I had a whole period with um, students I was training and I literally told them at the beginning of the year, like, hey, I'm going to start working different because I know something else is in this and I'm not at all sure. So if you're willing to play with this, um, I'd be very happy. And otherwise, I can even transfer you to another teacher. So I had no point of view about that. But um, they actually all chose to stay. So, um, hey, Leah. Hey, Ilsa. And um, so we started working. And it was only like half a year, a year later that I started seeing like, oh, it's this being. And this being thing is invisible. It's like you can play with expanding your space just by asking it. So if you're watching now or later, you can literally ask now, okay, I'm going to make myself, not your body, but like the being as big as a room. And then you're going to expand beyond that and make yourself as big as the building you're in. And then make yourself as big as the town or the city you're in. And you can keep doing that bigger and bigger and bigger, actually infinite. What I started seeing when I was working with um, voices, the more the person was willing to expand that space of being, the more it became possible. And at a certain point, me and my students started seeing actually that the moments things weren't working, which before maybe we would have called like, oh my God, I failed. It's not working for me. I need to change something and I need to work harder. It was every time that that moment where somebody was like literally contracting the space they were being. And um, it was so beautiful because it was invisible. And after a week or two, it was so funny because everybody knew like, oops. So were you expanding in that moment? No, I was, oh no, I totally contracted my space there. So um, that was a different angle to start working actually to start being willing to expand more and expand more and expand more and maybe if you just did it um the thing is when you do it and you ask then your body to connect with what you choose to be the expansion you choose to be your body will start working in a very 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 different way so the same goes for throats and the same goes for the voice and the same goes for sound. So um, there was literally more space for everything to be in. And um, when you work with 
voicing and stuff. Like for example, even if you do commercials or if you um, speak in front of an audience, it's not only about you. And how much, hey Judith, how much have we been taught that it is actually about how I perform? Did I do well enough? Am I standing correct? Did I use the right words? Am I loud enough? So what I started playing with was like, oh my God, what if it's not about me, the performer? What if me, the performer, is actually just the channel that lets a song or a text or whatever it is that wants to be in the world, you're actually just letting it through you. So you're literally the instrument. And that became a very interesting process because it was actually there where you let go and where you start asking, for example, if you're... Um, if you need to speak a commercial, like if you need to record a commercial, like what does that commercial requires of you, the speaker? If you're a singer, what does the song requires of you, the singer? If you give presentations for your business or for some other business, what does that business require of you to be? To actually let that message true and invite people who are listening to it, who are watching it, to engage with you, to engage with the product, to engage with the business. And um, I like what shows up. So, like yesterday, I was playing with this friend who is like a professional, um, she does professional things with her voice. And it was so amazing to actually start playing and see what showed up um, like instantaneously, the throat released. Um, sound can change so I just I just love this conversation it's really like being your voice and see what other things desire to play with you and what they desire and require of you which is opening up a totally different conversation um, if you've never worked with these tools I've never heard about it maybe it sounds a little strange and it is actually a little strange and if you're willing to um, to have that in your world, things become so much more easy. Because every um, song, every lyric, every text, like anything is actually a life or an entity with a life form of its own. Hey, Marianne, yes. <laughs> and it's so amazing when you start engaging with that entity. So for example, like let's say you have a business and um, so you're gonna be presenting your business to the world. Do you ever ask your business, so, okay, so what would you like me to talk about? Like, what do you want me to tell about you? It's almost like presenting a friend to another friend or to a group of people, like, okay, what would you like me to say about you? Are there any things that are important? Are there any things you are aware of? Um, and this, maybe your business will not like let you know like with words through your head, but there, if you start asking these questions and then just Play with it um, when you make a video or when you have a talk or when you meet people um, you might start noticing that you will have different conversations because it's not about you anymore it's just about like hey I'm playing with this thing it's called my business and um, I apparently know some things or I'm willing to be the space where like information can come to me about this and I wonder is this something that can be an invitation for you to create something else with your business or in your life. Um, and it's very funny because it opens up this huge difference in how people start singing, how people start voicing, what they know, what they be. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I just wanted to open that up and um, let's talk about voices, voicing, voice, vocal stuff, because there, there is so much um, amazing like stuff in the world which is basically what i've seen a lot of doing there is a lot of doing involved you have to do the right things you have to do certain things you have to follow certain steps um and what if there is something greater beyond that what if there is something else actually possible with your voice with your body with voicing what you know even if in this second you don't even know, or maybe it's like, for me, this, this things, like for years it has been something now that I'm like, I'm not sure what I know here, but there is something else possible. So then I started discovering what was possible 
And then for like many months and <laughs> years and maybe still now, it was just that like weird things, weird things going on, weird questions, but it started working like every time. And then um, I just started asking what would it take for people to show up in my life that I can actually have this conversation this way. People that are looking for these conversations, prof professional singers, professionals that work with their voice that are actually looking for like, I'm doing this and maybe it's fun, maybe you're bored, maybe you know something else is possible, maybe you have like this huge problem in your body going on or with your voice or maybe you just stopped singing somewhere along the way or stop using your voice or stop acting because you were maybe working with somebody that had so much judgment maybe about them, maybe about you. Um, so what if there is a different possibility? What if you could actually train your voice from a space of no judgment, which doesn't mean that everything needs to be good, but it's more like the energy beyond it. And it's more like opening up spaces instead of like constantly being in your head, thinking like, oh my God, is this right? No, it's not yet. Maybe I should adjust this. Like, what if you could start training your body, training your voice from the space of possibilities instead of the space of judgment? And it is, like, so, so, so different because you will keep expanding instead of contracting. Because if you look at when somebody judged you or when you judge you, is that actually expanding or does it contract? And can you imagine, like what we do often, like we contract so much and then we expect our voice or our body to just do whatever we want them to do. It's like, no, no, I want you to sound like that because that's how we are supposed to sound and that's how we sounded yesterday. There is no question. So um, I hope this is like an invitation for you. If there are some questions, maybe in the chat, there are some hellos. Hi, hi, Anita, hi, Ali. So do you have some questions about this? I'm going to do this more often, like episodes about bodies and voices, because um, it's just something that amuses me, and it's time to let it out. Because last week when I started that session, like apparently I realized, like, hmm, there are maybe people looking for <laughs> vocal training or, or body training, not from the space of judgment, but truly from the space of possibility, um, which is just for me, way more fun. And it doesn't mean you can become better and it doesn't mean that um, it's all like, holy oh, don't worry, it's like, it's amazing and you're amazing and that's totally not the deal here. It is actually opening up a space where you can start looking at what is. And um, judgment is usually not so much what is, it's just a point of view that you take on or somebody else take on. And um, as a speaker or singer, when you're aware, you will pick up on the points of views that somebody else has, maybe even like in the future. And um, it's very interesting when you start to acknowledge that you can just choose like, oops, do I need to stop myself or can I change something here? Because um, you will be aware of them often. And um, what if that's also creating constriction in your voice? And what if you could actually start taking out um, this judgment also out of your body? Like if you have things in your throat going on or like often maybe you might wonder like, okay, how much judgment did I actually lock in to my throat? How much judgment did I pull in? How much judgment did I swallow? How much point of views did I swallow? Did I try to swallow? Am I keeping locked into my voice? Um, and this, this thing is huge a lot of times. Certainly, if you have been doing things, for example, on social media, where a lot of people will watch and just have a point of view. And um, if you pick that up and if you make that real, what does that create? Usually not more. So if you are being that space where you don't even like pretend it's not there, but being in front of an audience and just being present with all of that, and one of the tricks that's truly amazing, um, it doesn't matter if you're like in front of big groups or one-to-one, -one, um, everybody uses the voice. Like you speak to your spouse, you speak to your family, you speak to your parents, to your kids. You speak when you go shop. 
one of the things that I've played with a lot is barriers, lowering barriers. What is barriers? Barriers are these like invisible walls that you put up um, when things get uncomfortable, um, when people are like mean, for example, these are like extreme um, events. But usually most of the people in this reality, they just have their barriers sky up high. So what you can do, or what am I gonna, like, if you perceive judgment or people like not being very kind, not being open, being uncomfortable, what do you do? Do you bring your barriers up or do you lower them? And that's the thing that I've really learned as a singer. For example, when I came up on stage, and usually there is like this little walk where you get to your final placement for the first like episode in a show. And the minute I started using these tools, it was so amazing because that all walking up became like really a moment where I would engage my audience just by bringing my barriers down. How do you do that? Just ask like, okay, barriers down, lower my barriers more and more and more and more and and the funny thing is that um often when you have done um things like maybe you have been coaching people or you have been like um diagnosed as highly sensitive or maybe none of that all but maybe you've heard somewhere in your world that um if things get intense you need to protect yourself so what people, what I've seen a lot of people do is actually put up like barriers or put up walls or try to protect them with all kind of stuff. And when I started doing that, things just became harder because I had to be like aware, like, is the wall still up? Is it like fine? Am I still protected? Oh my God, what am I aware of? Till the moment I heard about this exercise, like actually when you lower your barriers, think it just get true. It's not that you're not going to be aware of them. But what if it doesn't have to stick you? Every time you actually put up a wall, it sticks to the wall. So what I started doing when I was performing or when I was doing a presentation or even when I'm doing this Facebook Lives or having a conference online was like before it started, taking a moment for myself and just being aware, okay, where are my barriers right now? Oh my God, it's like the premiere. It's like a first show. Ooh, I perceive all the judgments. Guarantee my barriers would be like sky up high. So what I would do there was like bring them down and more and more and more and more. And what if I could be that energy in that space that would actually start crushing the judgment. And the funny thing is when you lower your barriers, people will not be able to judge you anymore. It will go straight back to their face or it will just dissipate. So I'm going to look here. I think this is our interesting judgment and expansion or not of an energy opening space. Wow. Many thanks talking about this and about the voice and point of view. What is creation starting? Yeah. So can your voice stop in going out with sound? Having the desire to come out different? My voice stopped two days ago. And by being in the question, I did receive this answer. Yeah. Well, so another interesting thing is um, what I started noticing was that what if the voice is actually often active even when it doesn't make any sound. And for years, I've been like busy with improvisation and jazz singing and like this starting point would often be something where I'd be like very uncomfortable, like, and sometimes even musicians like looking at me like, what are you going to start? And some years ago, I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with a pianist just for the fun of it. And um, I was totally enjoying just being present and he was playing and at a certain point he was like really looking at me like why do you not start singing like what's up and what's up and i felt the energy and he started looking at me and that in that moment suddenly all these pieces came together like oh my god i definitely started singing it's just without sound and this is something as well that I started looking at when I was working with singers that made themselves wrong, for example, for not starting to sing. But also with people like not starting to talk or not talking or with children not talking. Is it really that your voice is not talking or is there just no sound? So um, 
we are usually primarily functioning from energy, which doesn't mean vocalized. Yeah. Yes, makes sense in the space where I'm in. Thanks. Yeah. So um, it's really interesting when you start actually looking, for example, even with kids that won't speak at the age where they're supposed to speak, how many times do we make them wrong in this reality? Like, oh my God, this kid has a problem. Um, and I even once worked with somebody who hadn't been speaking like for eight years and then had all these labels and problems. So 20 years later, later I got to work with that person. And the, one of the first questions I, I asked him was like, hey, did you even care to talk? And I was like, no. I was like, okay. So did you acknowledge that, that you didn't care to talk as a kid? And I was like, oh my God, what if there is not a problem? What if some kids just talking is just way too slow for them. So um, one of the things I like to play with is like, well, do they have the information? Maybe they don't even have the information because for them, they're just communicating, they're talking, but the adults will just like around might go crazy. Like thinking like, oh my God, like why is this kid not talking? He should be talking because all the other kids around them are, are around, around him or her are talking. So there must be something wrong. What if there is nothing wrong? What if the kid is just functioning differently and um, yeah, is the kid aware that he's supposed to talk? Because it's not always because something is logical in your mind, because you know how things work in this reality that it's often like that it's also clear for the kid. So um, it changed like the voice of that person 20 years later and whatever it, that person had decided that, about what was wrong and what needed to change in like about two hours. Um, where the person got like choice to to use his voice like differently or not. So um, where do you already speak even when you don't like literally voice it out? Um, hey John, <laughs> barriers down, blocking incoming judgments. That's amazing. Yeah, well, it's like cool. It's even like what if you don't even need to block them? It's like just like poof. It will go through it will it will just change because like it's like this whole system that we're in like somebody does something you go into reaction and that's where you actually go into a different action it's like wow usually i would do that so let's bring them down and you just literally change the space and the energy where everything changes so it's a golden golden tool and um not only when you're in front of people you can you can do that anytime and just start First of all, perceiving when you have your barriers up. Because um, it's literally where you also lock in you and where you lock out possibilities. So um, with judgment, and, and certainly if you're a performer, there is like this, this um, like awesomeness in when you get, when you become willing to receive judgment. Um, and that was like something for me as a performer, like I was always trying to avoid. I was for many years trying to just like write the right songs, do the perfect per per performances just to avoid judgment. Um, and what if that's actually not what we're here for? And the minute I started getting that, um, I don't perform that much anymore, but I know now that when I do it, I can actually be a catalyst of change by receiving the judgment and changing the energy around. So the person made cognitively or not cognitively becomes like aware of a different possibility or will like receive the judgment back. And, and that's not even the point because like usually when you do a performance or when you do a presentation, you will like 90% of the people will not come up to you and you will never ever see again. Um, but like, some months ago I was working with an opera singer and it was truly amazing to have this conversation because like these are the people that are in front of thousands of people every night. And what if by being willing, and it's not even by being in front of thousands of people, maybe for everybody that's watching here, what if you are actually being a catalyst of change if you would be willing to receive judgments? And what do I mean with receiving judgments? It has nothing to do with like, okay, so somebody judges me, so now I just have to take this? No, it just has to do with receiving judgment is not making it real and just seeing it as like, wow, this is interesting. I've received all this judgment. And what if I didn't have to do anything with it? I could just let it be. 
I don't have to fight against, I don't have to make it real. Because every time when you actually put your barriers up or when you start like thinking like, oh my God, this person has judged me, do you realize that you make that point of view more real than you? And that's, a, that's like huge. When you start seeing everywhere you have made judgment, judgments of other people's, but like maybe also like how many of you just judge yourself like all the fucking time? So how much do you make that judgment more real than you? And this is a really um, a huge one again. So by dropping your barriers, also for you, so maybe you still have a barrier for you where you hide yourself behind. Like, I hope nobody ever sees this or that are things that I don't even want to know about myself. When you start being willing to know that about you and have no point of view, it's just like something like, okay, well, that's not perfect. What else is possible here? How much more freedom would you gain? And maybe you can even feel like that changing something in your throat or in your belly or wherever you have been um, locking up judgments or taking it in and just making it real. So like one of the questions that I love asking, like how many judgments did you actually lock up into your body, in your throat by making them real and greater than you? And everything that is. <laughs> maybe you want to let go of that. And you can just ask your body, like, wow, how would that look like? And maybe you'll feel like your throat feeling a little like sore or something else. What if you could just ask your throat, okay, is this a release? Maybe you feel nothing, that's fine too. So with all these things, it's not about getting it right. Like, oh my God, she said that I need to do this and now I have to feel this. Like, I don't feel it, so it must not be right. No, it's really about discovering what are the possibilities. What are possibilities that are available for you um, by playing with these tools. So these barriers thing and asking about, like, okay, what am I aware of here? And just when you look at people, start seeing, like, when you judge them, ask yourself, like, okay, am I judging them? Or am I aware of all the places that they have been judging themselves? Because when you are aware, you will be aware of where people judge them. You will see it on the body. And that's like truly amazing with all this body work and um, um, access consciousness um, body classes. You actually go and do a lot of body processes that will um, eliminate that judgment. Like for example, the facelift is like, we have put so many judgments, like made them real. And often like how many of you have been creating your body actually even built on judgments of other people? Like when somebody says like, oh my God, you look so good, so skinny. How many times do you then after that for the coming weeks go into the mirror every morning and just check if you're still skinny? Or if somebody says like, oh, you've put on weight. Like you go and <laughs> check out. So you, you make these things real just already by wondering like, oh my God, did I put on more weight? Who let me check? Where did it happen? Um, and there is like such a great freedom in that to um, start seeing like, oh, that's just a judgment. What if I didn't have to do anything with it? And one way to not do anything with it, not with your own judgments or with other person's judgments, is just really, like, if you perceive them, if you hear them, okay, interesting point of view. Interesting point of view that I have this point of view about me, my body, about my voice, about whatever it is you have a point of view on you about. An interesting point of view that that other person has that point of view. And usually it will just be a judgment that's, running in their world and so they will project it out on everybody around them. So if you can drop your barriers and not fight against or not make it real, but just like receive that judgment, what can that create in you? Mm. Yawning here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so are there any questions about voices, about stuff that has been going on in your throat? Um. It's so funny for many years it wasn't even fun for me to do vocal coaching anymore because it was all about making people better and people would come to me to become better and I like at a certain point I was just like this is just not really exciting 
it's just about me like finding where to push the right button and that there is no question there is no possibility there is so much more possible with your voice there is so much more possible with your body and for me i'm always wondering like okay what else is possible with my body what can i change what can i invite it to with my voice the same and more and more i'm letting go of all the judgments i've been locking in there for over 25 years and i'm starting to wonder like okay voice like what if i would like give you carte blanche like what would you like to create in the world which starts a very different conversation between you and your body between you and your voice so if there are no more questions i'm gonna like and this first episode of New Generation Conversation about voices. And um, yeah, I'm gonna look at creating every week like a conversation online where you can join and there will be just like different conversations going on. Um, Cause I just love to play. And there is this thing, what, oh, before we close off maybe, if you like go out into the world and just start wondering like, what is it I know that I don't, yet no, at this very moment. And, and opening up this kind of conversation sometimes open up because you're together with people or people will ask you questions where you can access to a different knowledge that you, in that moment, didn't even know yet. So um, for Mariam, maybe, like, since you're writing something, like, with your voice, like, what's going on with your voice? What is your voice trying to show you? What is your voice trying to tell you? And if there was nothing wrong about your voice functioning very, very different in this moment, what will be possible? And one of the questions I love to ask also is like, if something is going on in my body or my voice, like, okay, is this the change I've been asking for? Because change doesn't show up ever the way you think it will. So you might have been asking to like, oh my God, I would like to, start singing <laughs> and then you suddenly have no voice again. So what if you don't conclude, but you actually start asking your voice, okay, what is this? Like, is this going to lead me to a different possibility? Is this going to lead me to like something that I wouldn't have been looking for if I hadn't this so-called problem? So what's right about all of this that I'm not getting in this moment? What can you show me? Yes, my voice is lower than before. They say it is eight, yes. And how much your point of view creates your reality? How much is that point of view, like I'm getting old, creating the lower voice? If, what if that's also, you can just ask your voice, is this how you wanna sound? Or is it a projection that I made real? Or an expectation that I made real? And like, hey voice, how would you like to sound? It's like still also like golden question. Like so your voice can start creating itself as it would like to be and not as it is supposed to be in this reality or as you would like it to be. Because there are so many projections and stuff, like, you know, your voice changes because when you become a mom, when you're over 65, when you're over 14. And some of these changes are, like, real, and some of them are just, like, your body will just create it because it picks up on these points of views. Like, oh my God, now we're, like, over 50 or we're over 40 or we're, like, we're in, in this hormonal, hormon, hormonal, hormonal change. Um, so now let's go to this next step. And what if that has actually nothing, 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 nothing to do with the capacities you have and your body has? So, um, yeah, what else is possible with aging? What else is possible with voicing? Let's see. Is this true? Is age lower your voice? Well, in this reality, I'd say yes. A lot of people, like... <laughs> And what do you know? That's like, Sylvia, what do you know? Like, is this normal or is your voice creating something? That's a nice one. Thanks. I will ask my voice. Yeah. And it's like they're also literally not having a point of view. And in this reality, yes, a lot of people will tell you once you get older, like what, what happens with your body? What happens with most bodies when we get older? Like your apps will get like less, everything will start sagging, like your voice will start sagging. And what if that doesn't have to be? but it could still be a possibility. But it's really there, start asking questions so you can get out of this like looping of what has to happen and the old stepping, like the steps, and just really start being in the question, like, wow, what is possible here? And body, is this really how you wanna create yourself? 
what I know, like, and I've just finished like a, an advanced body class, in, an amazing advanced body class in Costa Rica here with Gary and Dane, um, Gary Douglas and Dane here. And um, one of the things that I've lately heard is like, oh no, that was maybe not here. But it's like bodies usually don't really desire to look ugly or to like, so what are we creating with all these like aging patterns that actually doesn't have to be true? So, <laughs> and it's, it's amazing. Like yesterday I did like 10 hours of body work and it doesn't mean you have to do so much, but like with these tools, using the processes like more than once in a lifetime, like, you know, it's not like, oh my God, I've taken this class and now I know how to do this process and now I'm gonna use it on people. But do you actually also create and change exchange so your body can like really get this possibility in? Because all these body processes, like, and if you wanna know more, you can go to accessconsciousness.com check out body processes or you can go to my website house of possibilities um, dot net and um, check out there I also do private sessions and that kind of thing but it's like really the more you start using these processes bars body processes um, facelift the more you will actually allow your body to have these energies to allow it to be those energies and to eliminate everything that is not working for it and um, it's like truly amazing. There is so much change possible if you do it from no point of view. So if you're just wondering like what else and how would your body and your voice like to create itself in the world. So what else is possible? Thank you so, so much everybody who was present here. I hope you have a very nice day and um, I see you soon. It's Sunday night. I think it's quite late where you guys are. For me it's afternoon. Um, but yes, what will it take to have this every week online on the Vocal House Coach? And if you care to like, um, send it off, if you would like a session, you can just send me a message and then we can do that online or live. Um, so much is possible, like also to release tensions in the muscles, in the neck, um, using different kind of energies. So you actually start having a different possibility with your body. So um, don't hesitate to just send me an email or contact me and um, See you soon somewhere around your world. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good day.